Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another video. This time it is comic book haul number 33, the third haul for 2019. Got some pretty cool books to show. I have a book off of my top 10 list for 2019 later in the video. From the thumbnail, you could probably tell what it what it is already. But anyway, I still got a bunch of other things to show and talk about. So um, here, we'll start off with this. This was this is um, Murderfly, Volume One, Number One. It is artwork illustrations done by my good friend Brian Quinn, who is under the he created his own label, if you will, Murderfly, where he and he's going to have several other artists joining him and drawing uh, comics and all of this sorts of stuff. Now the reason why I bring this up is because not only it's giving my boy you know some uh, a shout out. Uh, I went to the East Coast Con with him, which brings me to my next, uh, the next thing I want to talk about as we move along. So I went to the East Coast Con. There's some pictures uh, I'm going to put at the end of this video for those of you that want to watch and all that stuff. Um, so I went to the East Coast Con with Brian on Saturday, and I was happy to have met some new people from the new to the YouTube community people I've known uh, on the community in the community but never met before uh, this is Stormbreaker uh, the saga of Beta Ray Bill number one this is the first appearance I believe of Stardust one of Galactus's heralds and the artwork is done by Mike Oming now that uh, goes in with my friend Brian Quinn I actually went to go see Sin City with my friend Brian Quinn back in 2005 when it first came out in uh, Bordentown, I went to go see it with my friend Brian Quinn and Mike Oming. Mike, that was when Mike Oming used to live in Bordentown, so we all went to go see that movie at the same movie theater that I go to uh, with my wife. So that was pretty cool. But anyway, um, at the con, I saw some familiar faces like Tony Toth, who I'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, it was great to see him again. He's uh, from Jersey, and it's good to see him at local cons. Saw Jimmy C. Always good to see Jimmy C. Um, I haven't seen him in a couple of years. I didn't really buy too much at this con. I bought like a couple dollar books and uh, one book that you'll see from this haul. Uh, here we have the free comic book day, The Amazing Spider-Man 2007. This is the first appearance of Mr. Negative, um, a character that is shown prominently in the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 game. So anyway... Ran into, I saw the New York Warriors outside. I made an effort to go up and talk to them. It's always nice to see them. I didn't see guys like Erod, even though he was there at the show. I didn't see Manny. I think he was there only on Sunday. But I saw Jeff Johnson, uh, Big E, Enrique. I saw Marky316. Um, I, th I think I saw a couple others. That, I'm sorry if I'm not remembering your name at the moment. But it was they were all very nice. It's always great to see those guys. Uh, this is Giant Size Man Thing number four. <laughs> the reason why I got this is because ETA Nick showed this in a video and in one of his videos a couple months ago. I saw this and I said, yep, I got to get that. And it's actually a cover swipe of a House of Secrets book um, that I unfortunately don't remember the number, but I got to get that one too. Here we have The Amazing Spider-Man 36. I think this is volume two or whatever. This is the 9-11 uh, issue. I, I purchased this in Red Bank, not at the Jay and Silent Bombs. Uh, I bought it at the com uh, the Comic Crypt, which recently moved, actually. I think it moved about a couple miles uh, down the road from where it used to be. But anyway, still at the New York Con. Like I said, I saw Jimmy C. I saw Tony Toth. I saw the New York Warriors. And... I met for the first time Mike Amazing Murfinator. It was great meeting him and his son. Uh, he, you know, I, he's from Boston, so naturally I wouldn't meet him up at a. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see him at a show unless he came to me or I. I go up to him, and this time he came down to my area, so it was nice to see him. As a matter of fact, he let me know that he was coming down to the East Coast Con a few months ago, so I, I appreciate him telling me that. And. I ran into Thor himself, AG Surfer. <laughs> I call him that because I first saw Mike, Amazing Murphy Neighbor, and uh, he said, AG Surfer's here. He's down there, and uh, kind of looks like Thor. And I was like, oh, okay. So I walked down there, which was near the CGC booth, and I met 
AG Surfer's wife. It was very nice to meet her. And yeah, AG Surfer does look like Thor. It's uh, really nice to meet him. He's from California. So now, again, it's another guy that I wouldn't uh, you know, normally see at a local con. Um, this is Batman Almost Got Him. Now, it's debatable with this one. Now, originally this came with a VHS and it came out in 1993. I don't have the VHS. I just have this. It's probably like a 5.0. It's got some damage. But anyway, uh, the significance of this in is, is it's de it becomes debatable if this is the actual true first appearance of Harley Quinn. I know there's some debate about it. I don't think it's recognized by CGC as her first full appearance, first true appearance, but whatever. It's just another nice little thing to have if you're a Harley Quinn fan. Am I a big Harley Quinn fan? No, but I saw it for like 20 bucks and I said, yeah, what the hell is 20 bucks? Um, I didn't get that at the con. So yeah, again, at the con, it was great seeing those guys, all the guys I mentioned. Um, I ran into a fan there. I don't remember his name, but it's nice to always meet a fan of the show or a viewer of the show. Um, great to meet you and talk with you for a little bit. I always like meeting people. If I, you know, if I may seem like I'm uh, a little aloof and all that stuff, but uh, well, that's largely because I am. But <laughs> but when I meet people in person, I like chatting with them. Here we have Spawn number one. Is this a rare book? No, but. It's an interesting book because it has the barcode and it's usually highly sought out. Now, listen, I'm a big fan of Spawn. You know, I, I, as you know, I like Tales from the Crypt and Silver Age stuff and all that stuff. What, what do you mean you like Spawn? That's a modern book. I do. I like Spawn very much. You know, I, I bought Spawn number one about a year, year and a half after it came out when I first started collecting comics in 93. Uh, and I was hooked. I, I, I enjoyed the storytelling. It reminded me of um, – it was not your typical superhero. I had blood and guts and serious storylines. It's almost like an EC, uh, reading an EC book, you know, where they had uh, more serious storylines. Yeah, brief, brief storylines, of course, since they're in it. It was an anthology. But um, I didn't have the barcode. Spawn, my local comic book shop, said he has it, had it, and he knew I was looking for it, and I bought it. And he gave me a pretty nice price on it. Not bad. So I'm very happy to add this to my collection. It's my only CGC for this haul. Now, getting back to the East Coast Con, I'm trying to, you know, talk about the con as I show this book, show these books. I don't want to just talk about the con, then show the books. I'd rather just talk and show these books as I'm going through it. Make sure this is all. This is the only book, well, the big book that I bought from the East Coast Con. Like I said, I bought a bunch of dollar books, two dollar books, and I'll make a video about them pretty soon. Um, it's going to be coming out soon. Uh, I just have to put them all together with a bunch of other books, but more on that later. But here we have Spawn 174. What is the significance of this book, other than a pretty cool Capullo cover? Well, it is the first appearance of the gunslinger Spawn. There, Spawn had a lot of uh, incarnations, right? We know that there was a medieval Spawn in the early days of reading Spawn. There were other spawn, uh, Spawns out there. The Redeemer Spawn and uh, a few others that I'll name in future halls. Uh, but here we have the Gunslinger Spawn, which is always cool whenever you throw demons in the Wild West or zombies in the Wild West. Well, he throws Spawn in the Wild West. And he makes his debut in this book and this was something that I was hunting for a while and it's you don't really see it it's a low print run is it something that's gonna blow up no it's not a spec book it's nothing like that it's just me a personal thing that I wanted to get it's not an investment book or anything like that it's a low print run you don't usually see them if you see them grab them if you see them cheap grab them but I like Spawn a lot, and that's why I wanted to get this book. And there are a couple others that I need to get. I, I have a pretty good Spawn collection. That was the only book I got from the, the uh, East Coast uh, Con that was of uh, big significance that I purchased. But I did get another big book, but I didn't purchase it. I'll tell you about that uh, next after this. Here we have Black Hawk number 117. Now, I know the People are going crazy looking for the first Lady Black Hawk or something like that. I don't know what issue that is. I know a couple of people are looking for it, and I think that the price on that has gone up. Um, I, you know, I, I have no interest in it, but I have an interest. I had an interest in this, and whenever I see these, now this is probably a 4.0. I have another copy. Whenever I see these cheap, and I always get them cheap, or other, other than that, I won't buy them. Uh, I always get Black Hawk 117 because it is the first appearance of the prototype. Mr. Freeze. Here we have Mr. Freeze on right on the cover. He has the freeze gun. He's called Mr. Freeze. And I think shortly after this, 
uh, Mr. Zero appeared in Batman 121, and they officially changed his name to Mr. Freeze, and he became the Mr. Freeze that we all know. But this is one of those prototype issues. You know how Marvel had a ton of prototype issues in the uh, early 60s before the actual heroes, heroes showed up? Well, I would say this is a DC prototype, so it's a pretty nice, cool thing, but I wouldn't spend big money on it. You know? This was the other book I got from the East Coast Con. I didn't pay for this. This was actually a gift. This is Umbrella Academy. This is the first appearance of the Umbrella Academy. This was a gift from Tony Toth. He gave this to me. Uh, and I was like floored. I was like, oh, wow. I heard good things about Umbrella Academy. I still have yet to watch the show, uh, Luther Manning. My buddy Patrick told me good things about it. He says it's like X-Men. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. But it was nice to get this out of the blue. It really was, and I love the cover. I love uh, uh, whites, blacks, and grays, and this cover reminds me, well, at least the style of it, reminds me of something like from the 1930s, which I really, really like. I like that style. I think, was it Art Deco or something like that? Uh, the way the buildings were designed and the, uh, the font and all that stuff, that's really cool. So I'm looking forward to, I looked through it, I didn't read it, but I, I'm going to read it and I'm going to check out the uh, show. So thank you, Tony, again for this great book. Thank you. It is going in my private stock. There we go. Another one for the upgrades, probably be in an upgrade video of mine uh, down the line. X-Men 109, the first appearance of the Vindicator, Weapon, Weapon Alpha. He's got a couple of names. Um, it goes delves a little deeper into Wolverine's backstory with Alpha Flight and all that stuff. Um, I had this copy. This not this particular copy. This book, I purchased it back, I think, in 1994 for like $35. And my copy is like a 5.0. This is a 9.0, 9.2. It could use a press. It might even go to a 9.4. I've always wanted to get... Um, a higher grade copy of this book. I, you know, as I move on and on, I'm looking at books in my collection. I'm always looking to upgrade down the line when it's convenient for me. I'm not going to spend big bucks right now on too many upgrades when there are other books I want. But as the book, the books I want start to the list gets shorter and shorter, or the desire to get them gets shorter and shorter. That's when the list for upgrades gets bigger and bigger. Here we have Strange Adventures 187. Now, I don't believe, <laughs> forgive me if I showed this in the previous video. Sometimes I lose track. I've had it for a while. I've had it since the beginning of the year. I don't, I don't think I showed it in the last haul, but if I did, please forgive me. But if I didn't, this is the first appearance of the Enchantress. This was one time on my uh, top books to get for a year. I think it was in 2016, 2017, but I just didn't get it because it was still pricey because of the movies, Suicide Squad movie and all that stuff. But I love the cover. And I said, you know, if I get a nice mid-grade copy, it's about a 6.0, maybe 6.5, maybe 6.5. Um, if I get a nice mid-grade of this and don't have to pay that much for it, I'll get it. And lo and behold, one popped up for me, I think in January or something like that, or February, and I got it. So again, if I showed this in a previous haul, sometimes I forget. Sometimes mistakes happen. There we go. Let's get to EC, right? As you know, I'm working on my Tales from the Crypt run. It's a very important run for me uh, for many different reasons. We all know, for those of you that watch my videos. Here we have Tales from the Crypt 25. As you know, a lot of Tales from the Crypt books don't have first appearances or anything like that, so they're not very desirable for a lot of collectors that like first appearances, that like movie books and all that stuff. Hey, I get it. I perfectly understand. Or just don't like horror. You know, some people like superheroes. I don't like horror. Um, cool. But when it comes to EC books, uh, or in particular, in particular the horror books, and even the crime books and the shock books, <laughs> uh, when it comes to significance, you know, like I said, we don't have first appearances or major story arcs, but what we do have are stories that appeared in the TV series or in the Amicus movies. And this one, the significance of it, is season two and season three of the TV series. In this book, we have two stories. Judy, You're Not Yourself Today from season two, which I think season two was the best season of all of them. And season three premiere, Love to Death. So that's the significance of number 25. Both of those stories appeared in this book. Here is an awesome Walt Simonson cover swipe of Detective Comics 69. Again, I don't know if I sh I don't think I showed this in a haul or anything like that, but I might have showed this in a Batman thing. I, I don't remember. But if I did, it makes its official haul debut here. I love the cover. And since this is probably the only chance I'm ever going to get owning something that even resembles the Detective Comics 69, this is pretty cool for me. 
Another upgrade. Shock Suspense Stories number one. It's probably about 3.0, 3.5. Uh, could use a press and a little bit of cleaning. But anyway, aside from that, um, other than the significance of being a number one, uh, I had another copy, which was really, really bad. This was a horrible copy. Um, but I got it because I got it really, really cheap. And I said, one day I got to, you know, get rid of it, <laughs> upgrade it. And I finally did. And I got this, you know, surprisingly cheap in auction. I thought it was going to go for at least $100, $150 more than what I paid. So I was happy with that. Significance. Um, the Amicus movie, Vault of Horror, 1973, first story in this book, The Neat Job. Other significance, I believe it's season three, season three, episode Yellow, starring Kirk Douglas. Both of those appeared in this issue. Yeah, Kirk Douglas and Tales from the Crypt. What? <laughs> Here's a book. Yeah, I would say, you know, it's a, it's a spec book. You know, I mean, you know, I know in the title I say spec. I don't have too many spec books in this, you know, so I apologize for that. But I would say this is a spec book. Uh, Fantastic Four Annual, number six. First appearance of Franklin Richards, the son of uh, Reed and Sue. But I think more importantly than that, it's the first appearance of Annihilus. Now, with the Fox deal done, Mar all the characters of Fantastic Four, X-Men, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you're probably not going to see these movies for a while. But you might start seeing hints dropped in the next series of films, like um, maybe Far From Home. I don't know. But the films, the films that come after that, you're going to see uh, drips and drabs of Fantastic Four maybe even X-Men lore inside those films, because I think they're going to be gearing for that. Uh, I definitely think, other than Doctor Doom, which is probably going to be a, a most likely, or should be a should, <laughs> you might see a character like Annihilus. I could totally see it. You just never know. I mean, look, I could have told you a couple years ago, I don't think we'd ever see Mysterio in a movie. I'm like, nah, they're not going to use him. He's too corny looking. But when you see the Far From Home trailer... He looks the way he does in the comic, and it works. He looks cool. And with all these other th things coming out, like the Eternals, and I think there's a rumor of Beta Ray Bill and Hercules and all that other stuff, it's like the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Everything seems to be a spec book. But I think this is a surefire uh, good choice as a spec book. I think it's already rising in price, though. I mean, this is an upgrade for me. I had a 2.5. This is like a 4.0. Um, I'm happy with it's from my collection, you know, um, but I think it's already going over a hundred dollars already, maybe even more than that. I don't know. I haven't been looking since I purchased mine, you know. So <laughs> prices go up right under your nose. The evidence of that is Giant Size X Men number one. Earlier in the year, like my copy was probably what like eight hundred bucks. <laughs> I have like a six five. Now my copy is what eighteen hundred. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. And the last book for this haul, this is a top 10 2019 want list book, The Vault of Horror 35. I have a nice solid 4.5 copy, maybe a 5 with a press. It's uh, covers firmly attached, no rust on staples, uh, centerfold firmly attached, nice pages, off white to white, beautiful book. Um... I have to think, the significance of this book, other than its awesome cover, it's highly desirable uh, in EC uh, in the EC world, EC horror collector world. <laughs> other than that, um, the significance when it comes to shows, movies, is the Amicus Tales from the Crypt, nineteen seventy two, first story, cover story, and all through the house. That was also remade for the first season, uh, second episode, and all through the house. Also in this book. Um, I believe there's one other one. Yeah, there's one other one. I don't know if I'm not sure if there's another after that. But season four, Beauty Rest, uh, appears in this book too. Comic book haul number 34 is due out in August. I, I know everyone likes the comic book hauls. Um, that haul's already done. I'll probably wind up film filming it really soon, but it won't be released until August. I got another top 2019 book in it, uh, EC. Very, very happy with it. So I would Thank you for watching. Stick, you know, check out some of my other videos, and check out guys like Jimmy C, Tony Toth, the New York Warriors, 
AG Surfer, Amazing Murfinator. Again, it was all nice seeing all these guys. But stay tuned for some pictures from the show. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.